Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Rahul and I'm a data scientist at locus.sh. Uh, we are an optimization company majorly focused at optimizing uh, uh, decisions in logistics. Uh, today I'm going to speak about uh, optimizations for uh, sales fleets and basically uh, from a perspective of FMCG companies. Like this is optimizing the movement of salesmen or salespeople and uh, the uh, and uh, and the and the next part of delivering the goods, the last mile uh, routing part. So the outline of the talk is basically I'll explain what is a sales speed, why do you actually need a sales speed, dig a little deeper into uh, what are the challenges, uh, dig, dig a little deeper into the stakeholders for the same, the salesmen, the, uh, the shopkeepers, the sales managers, formulate the problem and then talk about our solutions and then some ground challenges that we face while deploying these solutions. And uh, uh, for both from a quantitative perspective, from a math model perspective, and also from uh, real world soft constraints, like uh, what, what are the ground troubles of deploying such a solution. So the first thing is what is a sales suite? So let's look at a FM, typical FMCG company. A, a typical FMCG company would have like uh, eight to 10,000 uh, stores from Kirana stores to wholesale stores in a particular city. Now what they want to do is that they have a, a fleet of salesmen, like 20 to 30 salesmen, and these salesmen need to go visit each of these stores and collect orders. Once the orders are collected, uh, the company would sell out delivery, send out delivery vehicles, dispatching the orders. So basically it's a two step process of once that you need to figure out which salesman should go to which store selling what product, uh, take what route doing, uh, selling that product. And once that is done, you want to send out delivery vehicles, dispatching those orders. Uh, the objective of this entire process is to get as much revenue as you can. So send the right person to the right store selling the right product and also reduce costs. So you also want to minimize costs like transportation cost and also maximize the amount of time the salesman spends in the store as compared to on the road. Uh, a question that I get often is uh, why do you need a sales suite? Like we are in a, we are in the digital era. We are in the time of uh, Flipkart and Amazon where people order products on a web application. And once the orders are there, you can always dispatch the orders. So this is actually a bit inefficient that you're sending a person on the, on the road to collect, to physically interact with another person to get an order. From an FMCG perspective, uh, that image over there is a typical shelf that you would see at a store and it has products from all brands and companies. So shelf space is very, very important. Uh, given that it is a push sales model. So people are really working. Salesmen are actually going on ground, pushing products. And if you are not selling your product, someone else is. And a quote that I got from one of uh, our partners was that, uh, increasing sales by 0.5% is a little bit more important than reducing cost by 2%. Uh, that being said, it's not true that reducing cost is not important. It is very important, but uh, the reach is everything. You need to reach the customer and you need to push your product on the shelf. That's why sales speed and sending salesmen or salespeople on ground is very important. So I'll dig a little deeper into each of our stakeholders. Uh, one of the insights that from the entire exercise of, exercise of building the solution and deploying it in India and Southeast Asia is that other than from a math perspective, looking at it as a math problem, you need to appreciate the human element. Uh, these are real people who we are optimizing solutions for and they have some real contributions in terms of, uh, they, in terms of their experiences that you need to capture in the math model. Uh, it cannot be purely uh, done sitting in a lab. So we did a number of uh, user interviews, interacted with these stakeholders. Uh, the most important stakeholder in this is the salesperson. And you get a very interesting insight from, from the person. Uh, that the classical optimization literature would tell you that to solve, uh, to get the perfect route, you minimize the distance. And that's how you're going to reach the maximum amount of stores in the minimum amount of time. 
but a person told me that uh, you need to be at the right store at the right time. So over because he's worked, he or she has worked for the past 20 or 30 years in the industry, they know that if they visit a wholesale store at a particular time during the day, they're going to get more money as compared to if they would have visited that, that store during the uh, closing hours or early in the morning. So these are regional heuristics that these people have figured out based on their experience. And we were really interested in modeling these. Like we have a lot of historical data. We want to figure out, uh, we want to try to add these objective terms in our optimization algorithms to understand and then optimize for these objectives that can actually get you more money. So if you, can, if you want to get more money, you want to be at the right store at the right time. So making a sale is more about being at the right place at the right time. That is one of the insights that I got from uh, salespeople. Uh, the shop owner actually, sh shop owners in, uh, this is a little bit more specific to Kirana stores. So uh, it, this also reinforces the same fact. Basically, the Kirana, uh, from a Kirana stores perspective, uh, business for him or her is more about managing cash flows. Although they buy from uh, every other company, but they have limited and constrained resources. And uh, again, if you are at the right time at the right, if you are at the right store at the right time of the day, which might depend on number of factors like day of the week, month of uh, what is the month, uh, is there festivity? Are there festivities coming around? Uh, you can actually increase your revenue potential from a particular store. Uh, these numbers, something that we got from looking at a lot of historical data also, that uh, revenue potential of stores is not static across the day and it can be very dynamic. So you want to reach at the right store at the right time. Uh, the third stakeholder is the sales manager. So the sales manager is the person who has to make these plans. He would have 5,000 outlets and all these salesmen, and now he needs to plan for the next month. Create these permanent journey plans, as they say it. Uh, so that person says that this is not a perfect science that you can actually have an optimization algorithm and which will give us, even if you don't use optimization, if you use historical heuristics and uh, intuition and make the beats, uh, it is still not going to be a perfect science. And the other problem is that even if you build such a thing, it has to, it needs to be very repeatable because although it says permanent journey planning, every month they get 500 to 1000 new stores. Now it needs to be re-optimized. You need to create new routes. So permanent journey planning by itself is very dynamic. And, uh, their point is that, uh, deploying or developing these plans would require more than just optimizing on uh, regular objectives. You need to look at software constraints, figure out how would you model these things in your equations. So from a bird eye perspective, I'll give a problem statement. What is the problem statement? So you have a set of outlets uh, that need to be visited. These outlets would have different requirements from foods and beverages to personal products to detergents. Uh, there are different people selling these products. Those are the salesmen. And there is a finite point uh, duration for which, during which these outlets need to be visited. So you need to take these outlets, create tools for salesmen. That is the routing part. Uh, then uh, assign these routes to different salesmen. You assign them. Then you take these routes and put them on different days at the scheduling part. So it is a very convoluted optimization problem which does three interleaved uh, optimization simultaneously routing, uh, salesman assignment, and also scheduling. So from a computation perspective, it is NP hard. I'll get uh, a little deeper into it in a while. Uh, I'll just get into each of these, uh, each of these boxes. Uh, so a sales suite, a sales suite I already explained, it's a salesman tour. It is a sequence of orders that need to be finished, uh, that need to be visited. Uh, so one common objective of get, defining a good sales suite is uh, you, the salesman spends more time in the store than on the road. So that is uh, typical distance minimization or time minimization that you need to achieve. Uh, two interesting uh, objectives that we added to our equations were salesman fatigue, that 
if the salesman is more tired, then he or she would, uh, it's, then you, you basically want the salesman to visit the higher revenue stores when uh, he's fresher during the day and lower revenue stores maybe a little later. And the other was, uh, so you maximize, you minimize the salesman fatigue uh, and also maximize the revenue potential. So this is an interesting objective because your sequence of just minimizing, minimizing distance might not give you maximum revenue possible. So your, your, uh, you need to assign the right outlet to the right salesman. That is one thing. The other thing is they need to be visited at the right time. So it is a traveling salesman problem with time windows as constraints also. Uh, yeah. Uh, a few graphs from, uh, this is, uh, abstracted data from, uh, from some of our clients, uh, different sales. So for the same, this graph basically shows that if you look at a particular outlet and historically different salesmen have gone there with selling different products. So that is S1, S2, S3, different salesmen have different skills of selling to the same store. So a salesman, uh, who pro probably be selling products like detergents for the past 10, 15 years would be selling uh, detergents a little bit better than other product, other products, which is very intuitive, but it was just to, it was just nice to see that, uh, intuition is being backed by data. And also it again, reinforces the importance of sales speed that people actually are actually adding real value in going and selling. You can actually get more money if the right person is going and selling. So, uh, so we looked at a number of other parameters from the salesman's perspective, like is his or her experience, uh, what are their outlet familiarity, uh, product familiarity, uh, regional familiarity, and other a number of other miscellaneous features to create to create this matrix of uh, if a particular salesman is going to a particular store, what is its revenue potential? So it's a salesman cross outlet matrix in a way, which is basically derived from historical data. <coughs> uh, this is a graph on the revenue potential of a store. Just two kinds of stores that we are looking at. Uh, one is a Kirana store. The blue, uh, it's not clear. The red line is a Kirana store. The blue line is a wholesale store. So as intuitive, the wholesale store is actually going to fetch you a lot more money as compared to a Kirana store. Uh, but there's a limited window where you want to go visit the store. when he or she is not busy during doing business with their customers. Uh, so, uh, the idea is that for all, for buckets of these stores, for all the stores, you will create these buckets of different revenue potentials. And, uh, we, you want to basically, the tool should be created such, such in such a way that the highest, uh, highest revenue that you can get, uh, from different, so you maximize revenue in such a way that you visit the bluer curves during the peaks and then uh, uh, map out the red, redder curves. So if you look at this slide once again, uh, the who to when to what to where mapping, now we have outlets with all of these curves which define their revenue potential. Salesman with a salesman cross outlet matrix which defines this salesman's ability to do, do uh, these particular outlets selling those products and you have days. And now we want to simultaneously create, uh, tours, assign them to salesmen and assign them to days. And, uh, there are a number of other constraints, uh, that are real world constraints, which can be, uh, these particular stores have to be visited by these particular salesmen only. They have to be done on these particular days only. So, uh, two kinds of products cannot go together. Uh, so, uh, those are very client specific. Uh, so some of the real world problems that I would, uh, show, uh, so actually we saw that salesmen usually spend like 20% of their time on road, uh, which can be improved a lot by better routing. Uh, this can be seen in this particular image. It's a, in one locality, three people are going and, uh, selling the same product. So that is just, uh, if you do not have 
hard time windows, that is a reflection of that routing is not really good. That different people are going and selling in the same area. So if you improve your routing, uh, that can be directly improved. This is a very interesting uh, insight that uh, we got from some of our clients that now one store, uh, we have a, there's a common constraint that different products cannot be, cannot go together when you're going and selling. Like food cannot go with detergents. Okay. Uh, now, then it should, and uh, so these are different tools for different products. So uh, it, it's heuristically believed that if you go visit a store in the morning, you should not go visit him once again to sell another product because that person's revenue potential has reduced. Now he just made a sale, he or she just made a sale and you're just trying to make another sale. So you want to space these visits out. You don't want multiple visits on a particular day. So uh, this brings to the importance of optimizing this, optimizing the problem simultaneously. That you're creating the routes and then you're scheduling them. So uh, scheduling should be done in such a way that you do not may, uh, increase the same day visits a lot. Uh, now I get a little bit more quantitative to, uh, for people who are in the routing community. Uh, and uh, uh, everyone else who's also interested in the same thing. Uh, what is the problem classification from uh, optimization perspective? So it's a capacitated vehicle routing problem, uh, which is periodic in nature because the entire the, the tools need to repeat. So the tools need to be optimized across time. There are multiple trips. So uh, one salesman can do multiple trips. It's multi-day, so that's a scheduling element that the tools created need to be put on different bu day buckets also. Uh, clustering is a very, very interesting constraint which messes up a lot of optimization. So when you are putting these tools on different days, you want those, those salesman tools to be close by. Uh, you want them to be close by because two days later or three days later, you need to make deliveries to those uh, outlets. And if they are spread out across the city, your delivery cost is going to go prohibitively high. So uh, you want to create uh, tours looking, planning ahead for the deliveries that would be made in the future. So you want clustering multi-product and heterogeneous fleets. You have diff diff salesmen can choose to walk or to drive or to take a different vehicle with a different speed. Uh, complexity of the problem, uh, with just 60, outlets in the problem, the number of solutions that are possible go above the atoms in the known universe. Uh, and the number of the batches that we would be looking at would have seven to 10,000 outlets. So uh, it really requires a smart optimization algorithm to actually give a solution in reasonable amount of time. Uh, I'll point this out later also that time is a resource that is really important in real world optimization. Uh, you even uh, we actually kept this as a KPI that we want to have a solution in 10 to 15 minutes because uh, all of these data, all of the data that goes into the optimization, uh, it's a very complex optimization problem at the end. The optimizer gave an answer after three hours. People are not happy with it. You want to change the weights. There are so many objective terms. It needs to be quick and you need to run multiple runs. You need to run multiple simulations. So optimization needs to be very, very fast. So for a batch of seven to 10,000, you need to have solution time as a very important KPI. So what was the solution approach looking at uh, all of these factors of importance of need for speed, uh, the problem being really hard and fast and still generate uh, very good solutions. So uh, as it comes out, solving it simultaneously routing with scheduling is very, very hard, probably cannot be done with the current infrastructure available. We broke down the problem. Uh, the two approaches I'm going to talk about, one of the approach only here. Uh, this, this breaks down the problem in routing, uh, aggregating tools, and then scheduling. So since we are breaking down the problem in two parts, uh, there are some approximations involved, but we added uh, weight of objective terms for the second part in the first part itself 
so that we get reasonable tools for a second uh, step which optimizes and finds feasible answers for scheduling. So how we do it is that we have a routing engine with, with specialized heuristics that generates a bunch of tools, bunch of feasible tools. We have a scheduling engine which is a mixed integer program uh, which looks at all of these tools uh, with a bunch of other constraints and objectives and then uh, puts them on, schedules the tools to different days. Uh, the downside of this approach is, yes, it is not simultaneous. <coughs> so uh, there are approximations involved, but the upside is that uh, you can get solutions in 10 to 15 minutes, and which is actually very helpful, even in a plan like permanent journey plan, which is actually very helpful because uh, you have to run like 40, 50 simulations per uh, batch or to display value and visibility. Uh, because again, this is, uh, we are dealing with real people over here, optimizing, uh, assigning stores to salesmen to visit. Uh, so there are other, a lot of other real world constraints, which even though you attempt to model them, uh, you would not be able to uh, model qualitative factors like, uh, uh, like a salesman, uh, like it's a, just a business heuristic that these people have to go visit the wholesale store at uh, 5 p.m. It is a fixed constraint. Uh, so it is a lot of trial and error still, but uh, the idea is always to uh, have a scalable fast solution to generate, to generate excellent solutions. The map visualization of server solutions. The picture I showed you before for overlap, <coughs> the routing overlap for a particular product has almost been eliminated now. Uh, just because uh, a math program would can deal with constraints and they can be hard, uh, you can always, uh, an optimizer can guarantee you something like this. So uh, we were able to generate almost zero overlap uh, for uh, routing. Uh, even the double zero, the zero double visits at a store were eliminated. So uh, this was a major, uh, major, major improvement because uh, for a manual scheduling approach, it is very hard for routing and assigning it on different days to ensure that there are no zero visits because there are limited number of days, limited number of salesmen, and a lot of stores to visit. So uh, one of the biggest uh, improvements was that the revenue potential went really up because of uh, minimizing zero double visits, just by minimizing zero double visits at a particular store. Uh, some of the average improvements, this is across clients. Uh, distance was reduced by 40 to 50%. Uh, transaction time was reduced, serviceability, number of outlets for beats, beats became realistic. A common thing that I saw in some of the clients that sometimes the salesman would be assigned 40 or 50 outlets and a realistic uh, number of outlets a salesman usually does is 20 to 30. So that is often a problem. Uh, like they were assigned these outlets because uh, of some business heuristic, but when it cannot be deployed on ground. So actually this particular, the optimization actually helped uh, generate tools which were realistic to deploy on ground also given these constraints of number of outlets. Okay. It's, it's a cut of it, but it says challenges involved. So challenges involved, uh, the first challenge, I think which a lot of you would relate to also is on-ground deployment and acceptance. Uh, even though, we, you tr uh, we tried a lot to model a lot of these complex uh, real world objectives. On ground deployment is still hard uh, because uh, it is just a change. There is a big change involved in how people function. And you can't just go the next day and tell them this is a new beat plan. You have been servicing these outlets on the past five years. Now you need to service these. It's, it's a big change for any person. So we, how we mitigate that was that there are multiple iterations that we run to show 
that yeah, you change the you change the weights. This is the as is scenario. You run multiple simulations with different weights, different combinations, and show that there can actually be multiple gains if you uh, follow the optimized answer. So uh, multiple iterations of different scenarios. Then we added some some special constraints like uh, for people who are really really uh, for sales managers who were adamant that. This won't work on ground. Uh, we added, we gave a phased rollout. Uh, we gave, we froze some particular salesman tools. Say froze like 50% of the tools and then optimized. Like that's a constrained optimization. That 50% of this is okay. This all is frozen, which is your critical business right now. Uh, let's roll out the other part. Given this is frozen, then optimize the other part. Uh, then that is optimized. Then we slowly relax. Uh, the frozen constraints to get more and more uh, uh, on-ground deployment. Uh, we made separate weight configurations for different geographies that uh, one particular, uh, so this is a multivariate objective optimization problem. So you can have, you can, depending on the weights, you can get a particular solution, you change the weights, you'll get B solution. So uh, we bucketed it down to different templates that, okay, uh, if you want clustering, this is your configuration with which you should run. If you want distance minimization, this is what with which you should run. No zero visits, there will always be a trade-off between one solution to another. And uh, one way of uh, showing that the optimization is actually uh, working, it was uh, to plot these solutions, give them visibility in terms of uh, uh, if you change the weights, the optimization is changing. Uh, the, uh, this part is always there, noisy data and poor address sets. Uh, actually, I can show you. Uh, these are two, uh, uh, these are batches. They're supposed to be one city addresses only. So they were outliers both in uh, inter, at an inter-city level. So for addresses, the image on the left is all the addresses are on in Mysore, but a small subset of the addresses are also in New Delhi, which is Clearly, those are uh, wrong entries. Uh, there are intra-city outliers also. Usually, sales speed data is uh, highly clustered, like there would be 100 outlets in 300 meters. Uh, but whenever you see one outlet like 100 kilometers away from the city or 50 kilometers away from the city, that's also an outlier. So uh, address data, the noisy data, salesman historical data can also be noisy. Uh, some technical challenges were uh, scaling up the mixed integer program. Uh, for those of you who are in the optimization industry, mixed integer programs can be really unreliable. If you give it more scale, uh, it's going to blow up. It's not going to give, a, give any feasible solution. And time was very important for us. So uh, we spent a lot of time to actually make the program reliable in terms of added constraints, added cuts, uh, to make it uh, robust to giving solutions. Uh, horizontal scalability of the product to different multiple use cases. Uh, so when we started with optimizing sales suites, our constraint set was this. Uh, soon we realized that as this was working, the constraint set almost became four times. That people said, okay, this is working, like let's add this also. Okay, let's add time windows to this. So when initial design begins, always try to ensure that uh, your product is going to be scalable and generic. It, can, it should not be that you make a very, very specialized product which nails uh, traveling salesman problem for time windows. You can get excellent solutions, but it cannot solve anything else. So uh, being generic across different use cases is very important. Constraints change, use cases change, but uh, the optimization should be still reliable and robust. Uh, and need for speed in optimization. That is uh, very, very critical. Uh, something that a lot of uh, people from academia often ignore this, the importance of this. You can't uh, run a plan for 24 or 48 hours and come the next day and look at the solution and say, okay, I will change this weight and then run again. People are waiting for you. Uh, Deliveries need to be made, uh, things need to be rolled out. 
plans need to get really quick and you need to generate, you need to demonstrate value also. So or they need to be fast and they need to be uh, fast in terms of changing parameters to run multiple scenarios. Uh, the, it's cut a bit, uh, it says conclusions. One of the most important conclusion is appreciate the human element when you are uh, writing optimization solutions for the real world. Uh, try to understand like uh, what do wh why do people do and what do they do so and try to get that learning using some machine learning model into or anything can be heuristics or machine learning model or business intelligence get them into the optimization because not only that will get it accepted on ground the other thing is that a lot of times those people have a lot of important things to say uh, like uh, the maximization of revenue potential, like getting this insight would have been hard for us, uh, just making that optimization pro program in the, in the office. Uh, so these are the real objectives that you can actually add and enrich the literature also. Uh, enrich the, uh, because as people in the industry, we have access to real world use cases. Uh, the other thing is that build fast, like which everyone says that, but uh, build with customers, uh, iterate more, give them more solutions, get it back, uh, add, mo tweak it a bit. So if you build with customers, uh, I've seen that the learning and the speed of develop product development has been really, really fast. Visibility is very important. Uh, so we made a, so Initially, we were giving optimization solutions to our clients, and it wasn't, they were not, uh, they, they did not have a lot of clarity why this is happening and why this is good. Because this is a complex optimization problem. You, people won't be able to get a direct insight into, uh, okay, you assigned this person uh, to do this order at 5 p.m., but why is that? I don't understand the reason for it. So, uh, in this particular case, we generated different configurations, as I said, and allowed people to have a flavor of different configurations. And that uh, generated intuition that, okay, I see that if you are, if you want really, really clustered orders, if you want really, really clustered tools, you cannot, you will have multiple visits on a particular day. Like if you want deliveries three days later to just go to one locality, to, uh, for your salesman, different salesmen need to go visit that same locality only. Then, uh, so your double visits will go up. But uh, so there is a trade-off always in multivariate optimization. So visibility helps you helps people or the different stakeholders to appreciate that trade-off. Uh, and speed matters. Uh, fast, real good solutions are important. Thank you. Questions, please. Very good talk. Thank you. Uh, quick question: uh, Are you using solvers or meta heuristics? Or for, uh, so for we use a combination. Uh, so a lot of is uh, we uh, for the a lot of a lot of the uh, IP is in house developed. So. The routing part is uses a combination of meta heuristic uh, heuristics and uh, and uh, and we use a commercial solver also uh, for the integer programming for the mixed integer part. Uh, I don't know, like we use uh, yeah, we use Siplex and Gurubi. Uh, 